What we're used to and traveling around the world is motorcycles go first, right? Tolls Always. or it's just yeah. we're, we're we're cooler. We go first. Well, we're number one. <laughs> so we are waiting for the tunnel to Whittier to open, and apparently motorcycles go last because um, they get run over or something. <laughs> Usually we go first, so we are just. Uh, Standing here, kind of in this faraway part that is very separate from the whole rest of the line. It's a little disconcerting. I don't want them to go without us. Look where the line is. But then they're like, but you go last. And we're like, last? How dare you? I know. I like, I don't want to breathe in the smog of all the, the trucks ahead of us. And I was like, why do we go last? And it's like, because motorcycles always fall and we're tired of picking them up and then they get hit. And I'm like, what? Yeah, he literally said it's because motorcycles get run over. Yeah, it's like, it was the, <laughs> they, they, I'm, I am a pro good sir. <laughs> I drop my bike only once or twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> Go, as soon as like we kind of merge into the tunnel, which was really super exciting, mm -hmm. like then I understand because yeah. you're following train tracks and you have to ride down the middle of them. Yes. And the tracks themselves need space for the wheels to go on, but then there's these two ruts yes. that if you get your front wheel in, yeah, you fall over and then the guy behind you hits you, and I'm like, ah, this makes uh -huh. sense. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of No Tears Frontiers. In this series, we travel all over the world on our KTM 1190 adventure motorcycle. We are two up, so I'm on the back and Tim is riding up there in the I'm front. I'm in the front. Yep. <laughs> and we go everywhere. We've gone through Central America, South America, and halfway Africa. up. Africa. Africa. Yes. Halfway up through Africa. And uh, now we are currently in Alaska. This is true. Exploring beautiful beautiful glaciers. Um, we, we made it all the way up to, to Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse. And now uh, in our last episode, we had ended up in one of the more southern points of yes. mainland Alaska in Homer. And uh, on, on Homer Spit to be exact. a beautiful sunset but uh, yeah we needed to find somewhere that we were going to camp and uh, the campgrounds on the spit itself were kind of overcrowded not overcrowded yeah. but not as romantic and pretty expensive and pretty mm -hmm. good for like RVs and vans but right it would have been perfect for something a little bit more sheltered than the little tent that we had yeah <laughs> but we saw an eye overlander that there were a couple of other spots further away from the spit but still with views of the bay and the sun was setting pretty quick, and I was kind of surprised at how quickly yeah. the sun was going down. I was trying to get as many <laughs> pictures as I could, but I knew that uh, we, yeah. we had to we had to find somewhere because trying to find somewhere in the dark is, is is not all that fun. I felt like this time pressure of okay, we need to find a campground and we need to set up camp. Also, the temperature started dropping pretty quickly, so. Yeah, Pressure so Marissa, was on. Marissa found a little place on I Overlander mm -hmm. and guided me in. Well, the sun is setting quick, but this is the lovely meadow where we're going to set up our camp. We're going to try to get it up quickly because um, it's getting cold and dark. But uh, what a beautiful view, right? Yeah, it was some little farm that yeah. was really, really pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, just everything that you would want, it, it totally mm -hmm. had. woke up in the morning. There's the, another there's a bonus glacier I didn't see from the spit. I was like, there's a glacier over there, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't even know that. No, I took a little uh -huh. walk. Yeah, 
yeah, there's like this old car that was like had things growing out of the passenger seat, wow. an old gas tank. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it really, really was. And so we packed up the camp that morning. We were going to be going to Whittier, mm -hmm. which people had told us about as being just a very strange place. And there's a very strange way of getting there. And that is this super unique tunnel. So we headed off from Homer. stopped at, uh, I don't even know the, the name of the town, but this little kind of hippie-ish little place that served us breakfast. It was called Happy Valley. No, it wasn't. No, it was called like Connect, and we'll insert the town name here. But it was cool, but it was just like, why is there this little hippie restaurant in the middle of absolute nowhere? You know, and the, the waiter had like Scooby-Doo tattoos and stuff, and I'm just like, this is very unfitting for the rest of the area. <laughs> the food there was also really good. I've noticed that Alaska does a lot of its own homemade stuff, um, probably because it's so hard to ship things in. Yeah. So a lot of the breads will be homemade. You see a lot of sourdough in Alaska, and this place, they, uh, I ordered a Philly cheesesteak Yeah, I ordered sandwich. a burger, no surprise there, folks. <laughs> but my bread was all homemade. Yeah, like, I think mine was too. And, wow, it, mm -hmm. it was fantastic. We see this storm front ahead of us. It's yeah. like, well, this might be the last chance to take some pictures. So I went down this little area where there's, you know, a recreational yeah. site. Random road. Random roads are awesome. And <laughs> it ended at this freaking beautiful lake. Oh. Colors are these oranges and reds and, mm. and the mountains in the background with this obvious storm of doom coming towards us. <laughs> yes. That was really, really, really pretty. It looks so wild out there, and I really liked that spot in particular because yeah. of like the contrasts of life and death. But then we knew the rain was a coming. Right. <laughs> and so we kept on headed towards Whittier under an impression that the best of the best may have already happened, but, right. but here we go. surprise when oh, we started buddy. getting towards Whittier there was something called Portage Glacier.
the glaciers and the waterfalls. Wow. This is awesome. And it was not just one glacier. Yeah. There is a glacier in like every direction. There are so many glaciers here. Look over here. There's a glacier there and there. And then right by that sign, it's a glacier. And then there. Look at that waterfall over there. It turned out to be a whole family of glaciers. Like everywhere you turned, there were glaciers all over the place. Check out this view, everybody. You got a river running through it, up to a glacier. <laughs> Nature, baby. And then there's some of my other two favorite things in the world. And it's off. This just steely blue. Oh, that blue. Just insane. So beautiful, beautiful. It was, it was <laughs> fantastic. We must have spent an hour there. <laughs> it was insanely, insanely beautiful. Uh, you know, in the land before time, where they like go through that tunnel, and then they like the scene they see yes. before them. That was that was this place. Yes, it was. Just a glacier paradise, I yeah. think. A glacier amusement park. Yes! A glacier museum. By the time we finished with that area, or at least leave. felt somewhat satisfied, I was, I could still we were like, why now. even go to Whittier? I, mean, I know, right? <laughs> But we pull up to, you know, the tunnel, you know, rah, rah. And... Okay, so this tunnel <laughs> is very, very unique. This tunnel is narrow mm -hmm. and long, and you can only have one-way traffic going through it at a time. And it shares a train track. Yes. So it's either a train, uh, eastbound or westbound traffic. Yep. Nothing, uh, nothing else. And that makes it very complicated to operate this tunnel. I mean, there's a yeah. whole force there's, there's of people behind the Every the half hour, they, they swap directions, and if there's a train, that, that you know kind of messes with it. But what we're used to in traveling around the world is the motorcycles go first, right? Tolls Always. or... It's just, yeah. we're, we're, we're cooler. We go first, well, we're number one. <laughs> so we are waiting for the tunnel to Whittier to open. And apparently motorcycles go last because um, they get run over or something. <laughs> Usually we go first. So we are just uh, standing here kind of in this far away part that is very separate from the whole rest of the line. It's a little disconcerting. I don't want them to go without us. Look where the line is. But, and, and we didn't realize that there was like a, a $13 toll yes, to, to get through, the tunnel. to get yes, to the tunnel. But whatever, it's an amusement park ride, so we figured to go through the tunnel of love, we shall pay. <laughs> but then they're like, but you go last. And we're like, last, how dare you? I know. It's like, I don't want to breathe in the smog of all the, the trucks ahead of us. And I was like, why do we go last? And he's like, because motorcycles always fall, and we're tired of picking them up, and then they get hit. And I'm like, what? Yeah, he literally said it's because motorcycles get run over. Yeah, like it was the, they, they, um, 
I am a pro good sir. <laughs> I drop my bike only once or twice a day. <laughs> you know, so we hung out in this little loser section where <laughs> someone to flag us down and all like the cars go. Yeah. I was like, I want to take like, a picture. Here. Someone's supposed to come and get us, but who's coming to get us? Way back. It's this little, like, you know, A-frame. It looks like you're running into a building. Yeah. <laughs> the train like tracks go lodge. into, like, yeah, a little a little Dutch coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, and it's yeah. like, I'm like, that's, the that's tunnel? it. But finally, someone comes, all the cars go, and I finally run, I run back. I'm like, when do we get to go? And some guy was like, I'll follow you, and turns on his, like, lights and stuff. I'm like, this is an ordeal. Like, yeah, this yeah. is, this is yes. crazy. <laughs> Alright, so this is the little tunnel. <laughs> so as soon as like we kind of merged into the tunnel, which was really super exciting, mm -hmm. like then I understand. Yeah. You're following train tracks, and you have to ride down the middle of them. Yes. And the tracks themselves need space for the wheels to go on, but then there's these two ruts yes. that if you get your front wheel in, yeah, you fall over and then the guy behind you hits you. And I'm like, ah, this makes uh -huh. sense. Uh-huh, it's actually <laughs> quite sketchy in there because also it's very slippery. There's yeah. wetness all throughout the tunnel, which is kind of weird because you're in the middle of a mountain. Like, where is this wetness coming from? I don't the know if it's itself, the truck The mountain itself, seepage, no. Yeah, it's like a cave. It's cold yeah. and wet in there. It's just like dripping and you have these train tracks and then this little yeah, strip the of Yeah, scary like end of day lights that you're pat you're lighting everything yeah. up. Yeah. Like emergency exits, I'm like, this is something. It's not the friendliest <laughs> tunnel ever. No. <laughs> But it was, it was cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. Apparently it's the longest tunnel in North America. Yeah. And yeah, I kept, I, I didn't fall. <laughs> it did feel like we were riding through a cave because it had been so crudely kind of carved out of the mountain and it was so narrow. Yeah. You could almost reach out and there are the stone walls all around you. It felt like, you know, if you're the dwarves going to the mines of Moria, this would be Nerd the alert. tunnel. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Finish your statement, I'm sorry. It's just a reaction I have. If you were a dwarf if you were from a dwarf, Lord of the Rings going to the mines of Moria, this, this would be the entrance tunnel for sure. You have true. to watch out for Gollum or such other creatures, trolls, things like that. And then we, we saw the light at the end of the tunnel and we burst through into a, a brand new world. That is the whole skyscraper on its side. All yeah, right. I can only imagine what it costs to stay there. Hey, that's beautiful though. these old buildings that you can see in the distance that that's what I wanted to go to because it's like yeah. those look like some Soviet Union era era crazy condos you know now they are American but Cold War era buildings. yeah Whittier is very unique in that it is so separate from the rest of everything back in the day before this incredible tunnel it used to only be accessible by yeah. sea but the U.S. Army realized that it was a very strategic point militarily to have it be fortified in case of an invasion during the Cold War. Yeah. And so they wanted to house all of these soldiers there and troops, but 
it's super remote, super tough weather. Um, how are they going to build something that could accommodate all of this? And so they decided we're gonna have a city under one roof, a giant building with everything you would need and yeah. to house over a thousand people. That was crazy. It definitely had a, a post-apocalyptic vibe to it. It did, it had since been abandoned. Yeah. Um, no longer with a need for this building anymore. Yeah. But um, very, very cool looking. It did look like Hawkins Lab or something out of Stranger this Things. This is very true. Just you know, something the nefarious has down to be going version. on there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this building had a hospital, a 350 seat theater, a four lane bowling alley, a jail, bakery, church, barbershop, library, radio and TV station, rifle range, photo lab, commissary and huge cafeteria and kitchen, kitchens and the officers' personal quarters and clubs. Fun That's stuff. A lot. This is true. <laughs> We did pretty much just a quick loop, and yes. then yeah, we got back in line to go through the tunnel of love again, the, tun <laughs> the tunnel of doom. It's more like a tunnel of nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> But it was it was it was worth thirteen bucks for sure, you know. Yeah, and what was really interesting was that everyone had told us, "Oh, you should go to Whittier because it's interesting. It has an interesting history. It has this crazy tunnel." No but one told, no us, about one the told us about the glaciers. Oh, the glaciers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So all in all, that was just turning the out to be... The sun was showing us things. It was just, it was just fantastic. Yes. The, the Fan, best little... Fantastic. Fantastical. Fantastical should probably be cut out. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Fantastical is going in. Uh, I said fantastical. So yeah, so we, we said goodbye to our, our glacieric friends again hmm. and hit the main highway. back into Anchorage, you go along this body of water. And now, tomorrow, we're going to be headed off to Valdez, Valdez, which is, some say, the best ride in Alaska. We shall we find out see. for ourselves. So I hope you liked this episode and stay tuned for the next one. If you did like this video, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding, ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace. Oh, there was a lake. There was, uh, there was just... <laughs> It was, it there was, was a lake. There was a lake, folks. <laughs> it's also on the edge of a sound, an actual sound, which you I hear think that, is... hear that, folks? Uh, <laughs> Heard it here first. <laughs> the sound. The sound. <laughs>